This is a little different than this Dutchman here. Uh, this Dutchman was made to cover uh, two cracks. Someone had already tried to patch it. Obviously, they hit something with a bolt, I think, and they uh, tried to fix their crack in the side of the bolt with a patch on the inside. So, what do you do with a bolt with different angles? different curves inside the bowl. You take a flat piece of wood and you put about a foot long piece of wood inside and you screw it flat with a flat piece of wood. And that draws a plank in so the plank's out of shape. And it's a little bit miserable to put a Dutchman in. So what I had to do is I had to go inside, peel apart their patch that they had put in. Then I took some blocks of wood and I actually forced the side of the bolt back out to where it was supposed to be. And, shim, shim. Yep, shimmed on the inside, pushing. This, this right here was pushed in about a half inch. And uh, I got it pushed back out. Surprisingly enough, I was able to take the router, which I didn't think I would be able to do because of the curve of the bolt. Um, the router has a small enough table on it, so I was able to route out most of my Dutchman uh, with the router, and then I had to finish cleaning it up with a chisel because in some spots the router almost comes right to the surface when you're routing it, and in some places it goes in the depth you have it set. So depending on how flat the board is, uh, the Dutchman. I took an old piece of planking from a hole that we had taken off. Yeah. Yeah. Matches the wood much better than the wood that we have here in the shop. I, after cutting that out, I made myself a template out of uh, cardboard. Same as I did for the shepherd. How did you take that pattern off that? What's that, thing? How did you take that pattern off of that? Well, I measured the length of it, and I knew I had one straight edge on it. Yeah. So I took my long my up here and I went down one side of it. Then I marked the ends of it and then I went in on the sander and I sanded in my piece of cardboard. Actually, I used a pair of scissors. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you didn't put, uh, I got the duct on a crayon on the edge. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I didn't do that. I usually, uh, I usually just cut them in with the scissors, get them really close. Yeah. And the Dutchman's always going to have to be sanded anyway, so yeah, if my pattern's okay. a little bit big, I get the pattern as close as I can, and then I cut my Dutchman just a little bit bigger all the way around. And then I go to work on the sander. And I work the Dutchman until... It's not perfect. It's not perfect. But... He got it so it was fitted in there. So yeah. how long was the original damage? Uh, well, there's one split to here from right here, so that's okay. about half of it. But then there's an overlapping split right above it, about a half inch. Okay, so and to get two Dutchmans in here and make them meet was going to give me a worse look, I thought. Than so, I would so, so this is routed out, I see. <coughs> that's that's half the thickness of the plank. Yeah. I'm routed in half the thickness. And now, John, you finished it with a uh, hand chisel, right? Yeah. John, your router obviously wouldn't go all the way to that point, so that was a reason. No, that's, hand, that's, hand that's, that's one of those utility knife, hand chisel, whatever, however you can actually get in there and get it out. Um, now, the challenge to these Dutchmans is anchoring them. Now, I have screws here. I have a whole line of screws here, so I could have, well, I couldn't quite get a screw in there, and it would be out of place because... The original screw pattern is what I usually try to keep anyway. Um, I did notice that there was a screw right here that I could actually come out and catch. And I could have probably got this one, but I would have dropped my cut down another half inch, which would have gave me a, even a bigger and uglier Dutchman. Because um, the thing to do is try to hide these, and obviously the bigger the Dutchman, the harder it is to hide. Um, the more lines you got, the harder it is to hide. So you just do your best at trying to do what you can do. Um, 
What I will do is I will cover this with the colored thickened epoxy because it's above water line. Um, I'll put this screw in right here. Okay, and then my challenge is to get that to stay in. We could sit here and hold it until the epoxy hardens, <laughs> but I think I'll take all them clamps and pieces of wood I got up there, and I had them all on here last night just so I wouldn't make a fool of myself today. Um, could you do a vacuum bag on that? Uh, well, we aren't really set up. You could. You could. We tried the vacuum thing one time. And I had a bit of a problem with the vacuum bag, so I ended up figuring out how I could clamp things a little better. And what I did here is I got a piece of wood screwed on here, but I'm actually screwed into where the chrome goes on, so I won't have any extra holes in the side of my boat. And then you got to go below the water line and find a place to anchor to below the water line. And what I did here is I just screwed down to the bottom of the boat. See, it's obviously got a few holes sealed and plugged in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we, uh, John and RJ, are have put the Dutchman in place, and John is the hardest, the biggest challenge in doing this kind of a Dutchman is clamping it in place. So as of last month, like last month, it was having quite a challenge. <laughs> So you can see what uh, what John's done here. He had, he attached a a strip of wood along the very edge of the gunnel and another one into the uh, bottom of the boat where an extra screw hole will, will be filled and hidden. The one along the gunnel by, by the rub rail and the, we will simply fill the holes in the, that we've created in the bottom of the boat with uh, 3M uh, premium marine epoxy uh, fairing compound. What kind of compound? <laughs> it's a 3M product. Yeah. It's premium marine. It's a two-part epoxy. Yeah. Um, those green and white cans up, up there. Okay. And the bottom of the boat has all been, all the countersinks have been filled with that product. It's really great below a water line. It sands very easily, and it's just like stone. And it adheres to wood. It just grabs the wood. No kidding. So I've got some screw holes. It is, it is a bit thicker. It's probably a good, healthy eight. And that, that allows John to uh, sand it in afterwards with a lot of control. Because it's wood. And these planks aren't a uniform thickness. Do you chemically strip this afterwards? Mechanically. I, this kind of varnish, I use a heat gun. And a, and a really good scraper. We buy really expensive scrapers with uh, Bahco, B-A-H-C-O blades that last forever and they're really sharp. And it took me about 10 minutes to, to strip this with a heat gun. So what are you doing in these other spots? They all need, every one of these spots will need a receive a Dutchman. And Steve, I think there's one right below you on your side. Right. Um, this boat lives in Oregon, and the owner is a woodworker, but has never put a bottom on a boat, has never really worked on a boat. So he's asked us to do sort of all the hard work, and then he gets to do the fun work, which is 
to strip it and make it look pretty. Yeah. Mike, what kind of boat is this? It's a 1930 Dodge Brothers runabout. She still has her original Lycoming flathead four. Oh. And it is in uh, Michigan at Robert Hankel's shop being rebuilt. It's a Babbitt bearing engine, so it's not you know it's not a Vermont engine kind of project. So it says Vermont. 16. 16. Why did he bring it all the way to the East Coast? Uh, they, they have been storing it for 44 years in the Adirondacks. And how did they get a hold of you? Uh, our YouTube channel. He watched our work and decided we were the people he wanted to entrust his boat to. Nothing like that. There you go. There we go. Woo. Hey. Good job. Hey. Good job. Nice. Good job. Nice. Good job. Nice. Bravo. Take 40 grams of sandpaper to that. I'm not sure. Probably. 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 Probably.